Oh no, it's another one of these Umnums on Sabenza Love Fest videos. Ugh. All you guys who aren't Chris Reed fanboys, you can go ahead and watch something else. I'm sure somebody's got a Strider or a Medford video that you can watch instead. But for those of you who have drunk the Kool-Aid, you might want to stick around. I've got some light to shed on the Omnumzon and its operation. Hang in there, guys. Be right back. Hi, gang. Rob here. It is the evening of 23 June 2014, and this is a viewer request video. <laughs> I've had actually several people um, in the last few months since I've be become a Chris Reeve Umnumzan owner write me with some rather desperate pleadings if I could give some instructions on how the darn thing works so slickly as I describe it, as One All's Pub describes it. They get it in their hands, some folks, and they just can't make the doggone thing work to save their lives. And I think some of that comes from the fact that these guys are Sabenza owners. And after they've struggled mightily to become masters of the art of wielding a Sabenza, they get a, an Umnumzan, another knife from Chris Reeve, and it's just nothing like the Sabenza. So I want to go over in a little more detail than perhaps I did in my review video how that difference really makes the knife operate. And first of all, let's look at the design of the pivots. If we look at the angle, trying to hold both knives so they're sort of vertical to the screen. If we look at the angle and the distance between this thumb stud and this pivot versus this thumb stud and this pivot, we can see that the angle of this ray on the Sabenza would be closer to zero if zero is being down here. So that angle is more acute than that on the Umnumzan. And the distance from stud to pivot is longer on the Sabenza. So what does that mean? That means the arc in which the Sabenza wants to travel when opening is more away in this direction, away from the pivot instead of along that axis of the pivot. It sort of be wants, it wants to be pushed outward and around. The same is true if you're doing that forbidden flick. You want to build tension in this direction, but when you change directions, it's pretty much out. Okay, now let's look at the unknown. How is it different? Well, if you notice, you can't even hardly get on that thumb stud the same way to make that outward move. What the Umnumzan wants you to do is lay your thumb right on this big chamfer. And if you're going to do a full range open, you just follow it right around. Your thumb barely clears this point. And open the knife comes. If you're doing a flick, same thing. Lay it right down in that chamfer and wango, there it goes. Now a little difference too in how the knife is close. First of all, the Sabenza, you got big generous cutout for the thumb, doesn't really matter how you grab it. You, because of the position of the clip and the size of the cutout and the way the spine kind of just falls into your fingers, you just grab it any old way and push. Uh, super strong lock bar, you can't really hurt it. Just push. And the lock bar is nicely chamfered. Not really rounded, but chamfered. It feels round to your thumb. Away you go. The Umnum's on much different. A lot more engineering went into this uh, release area of the lock bar. If you notice, these, these knives lock up in a way that appears pretty late. So it puts this point almost right in the middle of the blade tank. Um, it forms a super finger choil very confining, very precise. And then this tab on the lock bar not only forms the back of the choil, 
but it also is sort of the tab for releasing the knife. Now remember, I don't have I don't have this big cutout <clears throat> that I have on the Sabenza. See, I'm getting this big round area to push on with the Sabenza. I'm getting this tab sticking up on the Umnums on, and it requires something a little different. If you try to find it with your thumb and push this way, with the end of your thumb, you find yourself fighting your other fingers quite a bit. They sort of want to press on the, the clip and on the lock bar. What I found and what I tell people is, <clears throat> make it easy, put it in your hand like a hot dog that you're gonna put mustard on, kind of like this. Applying pressure way at the back with the pinky and the ring finger and sort of pressing against the spine with the middle finger. And then just use the, the side of the thumb and just push it over. Do that more naturally. There. It doesn't dig into the thumb. It actually is quite comfortable. <clears throat> Much different than the Sabenza. There's that move. And there's this move. Both work extremely well. They're completely different. I think the Umnum Zahn has more of a sort of tactical design. You don't really have to worry about how you're building your tension on opening. You just find that chamfer, put your thumb in behind the stud, and out she goes. But because you have that guide area, that see it in the dark area, or don't need to see it in the dark area, that does occlude the release of the lock bar. So it's just designed a little differently. It works just fine. You just sort of have to know it at once with your hand. I promise if you sort of practice what I've shown you and explained, your uh, frustrating Omnimzon will become one of your best friends and you will marvel at how smoothly it operates. Hope that helps. Grace to you and peace, my friends, from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And remember, the word is sharp.